Oh, oh wow. I don't think my boss likes me making videos. I think she just wants me to work. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Hello, folks. Welcome back. For I'm the one, the only. I am a hobo, Tom. And I do have to apologize. I've done absolutely nothing but work this entire week. So I haven't done any of my videos. I think the only wrestling I've actually seen was Monday night. So I do have a Monday night Raw review. Tomorrow I might catch a replay of SmackDown. Or at least this week's SmackDown. Oh, and I have some, some stuff to talk, talk about too. So first thing, man, just like the BC Boys song goes. The sky is swollen and I'm falling behind. Yep, that kind of sums it up. The sky is falling and I'm falling behind. So yeah, um, then I'll give a little um, thing about what's going to happen. Oh, that's right, I always keep on changing this, the angle of this computer. I've been fiddling with this computer too. There we go, oh, that's perfect. This chair is so comfy too. This flop back, tranquilo. Um, that and it's been Easter. I've been keeping my one Easter, my one Lenten promise. Um, I have been visiting my one friend who needs a lot of encouragement and support. So thumbs up to her. But more so, oh, it's time to get off all the bad stuff. It's time to talk about some pro wrestling. And this is going to be a really weird video because this video is so out of order. First, let's talk about Fastlane. I did make a review for Fastlane, and I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to my guns. Besides the main event, which was what was the main event? Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns. That match was amazing. It was overbooked, and that dropped it down a little bit. But still, that was that was a true pay per view main event. The fun stuff between Alexa Bliss and Randy Orton, that was fun. Everything else just seemed like a good Raw. But Dr. Tom made some decent predictions. He got... So Bliss won. Drew won. Roman Reigns won. That was a no contest. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, you got four out of seven matches right. That means he's inside the head. One Stephanie McMahon Helmsley. So that being said, if you want to, you can catch my review um, later. Um, nothing is going on this weekend. Finally, I'm gonna take a break. Eventually, next week though, I'm gonna put a day in the life of Hobo Tom up oh, as my three-year anniversary. Even though I think that was kind of earlier than that. I'm just so behind in videos, it's not even funny. So Fastlane is in the books. Into the garbage, into the dustbin it goes. Yes, I do know what dustbins are over there to my friends in bonny old England. I hope you guys are doing okay out there. I hear there's nasty things of coronavirus. I live in Florida, baby! <laughs> the only thing we worry about are, are alligators. Yeah, alligators are bad. But enough of the, but talk about alligators. Let's rewind the clock a little bit. And let's talk about last Friday's SmackDown. So it was actually a pretty decent show. Oh, and as always, I have some shout-outs to give for that SmackDown. I'm going to break it up for a change. Uh, let's see here. Drake Maverick is cool. You, sir. Definitely know how to rock that air guitar.
See you, Iggy. You sir, you always beat that count, cause you get to that you get to that six count. Matt Riddle's bong. You're just there chilling with your briefcase boombox. And Judge Hammer, you, sir, can crawl out of here. So that was really it for my thank you. So let's talk about some SmackDown. Um, it started off actually pretty quick. Uh, started off Sasha Banks taking on Nia Jax. Nia Jax is strong. I'll give her that. And that's good and bad. And I think probably t <laughs> either Dredge Hammer or Matt, Matt Riddle's bong. I think my comment was, who's going to injure who first? Is Nia Jax going to injure Sasha Banks? Or is Sasha Banks going to injure Sasha Banks? Sometimes you can never tell. Um, Nia Jax hits a warrior press almost right off the back. That was good. Um, Sasha, she's a little too fast. Uh, she cannot hit the bank statement though. Nia Jax is too big, too strong for that. Uh, definitely Nia Jax is a powerhouse over much smaller Sasha Banks. And then Bianca Belair shows up. Wait a second. Are we going to have a hada hada? Oh wait, we did have a hada hada player moment. That was fascinating. That's right. My timing's just all goofed up. So yeah, um, Bianca Bell sh shows up. Um, Naya has Sasha Banks in the stretch. Muffler, that was pretty cool. Uh, Shannon Baszler and Bianca just a fight outside the ring. That's great. They goes into the ring. Shayna takes out Naya Jax. Um, Sasha hits the jackknife cover on, on Nia Jax. I'll tell you what. 
Oh, that's right. I did see some. Control top pantyhose there. On Sasha Banks. I like it when I can see things like that. Trust me. I'm, I have a very boring life. As you'll see sometime next week. When I put up my... my a day in the life of Hobo Tom. Um, so yeah, that match was okay. Again, a little bit getting over book, but it was the lead up to Fastlane, which for SmackDown, they're like, yep, Fastlane is coming up. We're going to skip ahead to WrestleMania. So then we have a Edge promo. Um, Naya and Shane kind of talk to each other. Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins shows up with a face Shinsuke Nakamura. They had their match. And Eric Bischoff is going to the WWE Hall of Fame. Indeed. And then the next match, we had a very technical match. This was actually a great um, baby face, uh, face, face match and where you have the Street Profits taking on Rey and Dominic Mysterio. And I challenge you guys out there. I'm thinking of another father-son tag team combination. I think I know you had Dusty, Cody, and Dustin Rhodes in the WWE f for a couple matches. There was Cowboy Bob Orton and Randy Orton had a match against two other people. I'm honestly trying to think of other father-son combinations. I think you have to go back. This is going way back. I think Jimmy Superfly Snuka and his son tagged together once. Oh, does that count? All those Samoans are, are related, though. I don't know. I don't think The Rock ever worked with his father. I wonder if... The Usos worked with Rikishi. And then... You'd really have to go back to like the whole Armstrong family. I want to say... And again, correct me if I'm wrong. It was um, Chris Armstrong, Brad Armstrong, and Robert Armstrong. I think it's Robert Armstrong. I honestly forget. It was a father and the two sons though. The whole Armstrong clan. Maybe Greg and Vern Gagne teamed up. Again, if you can think of other father-son tag teams, let this guy know. I do always like to improve my wrestling trivia knowledge. But this was really good. There was the Street Profits taking on uh, Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio. That was good. Very technical. Yeah, it, it, it was very good. Dominic, uh, what can I say? He looks like a seasoned professional wrestler. He looks like he's honestly been in the ring. Let's see, I wonder if that helps. Oh, wow, it does. Um, it, it looks like he's been in the ring literally forever. It's so good to see that. And with that being said, I mean, the, the greatest teacher is father, Ray Mysterio Jr. I'm sure he's talked to the Guerreros all the time. So much wealth of knowledge It's being passed on Just going things through so quickly Street Profits are coming into their own There are no slashes either uh, Again, very technical match Dominic, he took over Again, um, Dawkins eats the buckle Clothesline uh, Ray does a slide under So so quick and maneuverable Ray is I'll tell you what, Ray Mysterio somehow hit the Fallen of Youth somehow He's been here to St. Augustine I don't know how he does it, I have to find that place Ray Mysterio found this whole week while well, granted I've been going to bed like one in the morning. Even though I do get a little more sleep, but that's neither here nor there. I still have to shower up. <laughs> I've just been lazy tonight. I just want I just need to relax for, for work. Work just got I think it got to me, it zonked me. But that's okay. Um Yeah, Dominic with a roll up. Uh and, and of course you have Dolph on Dolph and um, Rude on commentary. Dolph mentioned Billy Kidman. Whoa. Just name dropping. Um, so Dominic won with the roll up. That was pretty good. Alpha Academy shows up. 
Wow. Uh, Rude and or, or Ray and Dominic, they fly over. They they they, they get them. This actually between the Street Profits, Ray Ray and Dominic Mysterio. This is actually a really good technical match. Solid cheeseburger match. Then we have um, Ray and Dominic. They had to pull double, double duty. They had to face the Alpha Academy. Chad Chad Gable so good. So technical. It's such a joy to watch Chad Gable wrestle. Very technical. Uh, Dominic, he tried to take out Otis. <laughs> no, no, no. Otis just takes out, takes out Rey Mysterio. Otis, again, he just wrecks both Mysterios. Uh, the bear hug. Oh, that squeeze. Ray sells it so well. Uh, Ray eventually gets a little bit better. He, <laughs> he headbutts Otis to get out. Or actually, he bites Otis to get out. That's good to see. If you're in a fight and a guy's in a bear hug, just bite him. Who cares? It's a fight. Uh, Dominic Mysterio hit, hit a Huracrana, the victory roll. Um, how was this one, or was it last week? Or he hit the Lama Heaster for the pin. It might have been last week. I, I like this microphone up there better, even though it's a little more echoey. But that's not too bad. It's just weird sitting where I put it. I still have to master space, but that's okay. This is an amazing Christmas gift. Again, thank you so much, Mom and Dad. I like that so much. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, baby. Okay. I was having too much fun with that. Uh, where was I now in my notes? Yeah, Dominic Hurricanrana, Victory Roll, Tornado DDT, that was great. Otis just kicks out of that like it's nothing. <laughs> Otis just looks like he's he gets annoyed by all these... Big moves Dominic pulls off. Uh, Ray eventually hits a Huracrana. Otis splats on Ray. Ray's dead, baby. He's dead, baby. He's dead. Alpha Academy win as they probably should. Solid cheeseburger match. Then Sammy Cannon talks, talks to his old buddy. Oh, with his camera crew, and then Kevin Owens shows up. Are we going to see El Generico versus Kevin Steen at WrestleMania? If they do, I will go absolutely bonkers. That will be an amazing WrestleMania moment, especially if they allow them to go all Kevin Steen and El Generico and even bring back El Generico's mask. That would be great. Who knows? We have uh, Daniel Bryan... Uh, he tells Roman Reigns to come out. Yeah, this is kind of a very typical, typical promo there. Sami Zayn. Um, yeah. He, he gets beat up by someone. That was kind of it. He, he did his, um, his promo. Then next we have Shayna Baszler. And Nia Jax taking on Natalia and Tamina. And this is weird because this was actually a really quick match. <laughs> Shayna starts off pretty quick. Um, Natalia eats a lot of things. And then all of a sudden Bianca Belair comes out. She gets she totally distracts Shayna Baszler. Oh no, yeah, this was Shayna Baszler. I'm sorry, this is Shayna Baszler taking on Bianca Belair. Um, Shayna tosses around Bianca Belair to begin with. Bianca makes a little bit of a comeback. Then Italian and Tamina come in, make the run, and they jump both of them. What purpose does this serve? This is a can of, this is a piece of, no, no, Natty's tits are too big for that. This is a can of soup. And then all throughout the sh out this show, because this was the lead up to Fastlane, again, I'm behind. As you can tell by the BC Boys music, um, that's that's Edge stuff throughout the show. Then in, in the main event of the evening, we have Edge taking on Jay Uso. Starts off so, series of quick covers by Edge. Um, I don't know. I think they're having the triple threat for Mania. It's going to be Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryan, and Edge. Mainly because Edge is is getting old. 
Father Time, remember, folks, is undefeated. You do not defeat Father Time. Mother Nature is the second one that's undefeated. When Father, Father Time and Mother Nature tag, tag, team up against you, things go south very quickly. And it's just, I mean, Edge is even older than I am. I want to say, and again, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. He is like 50... Two, I think. He's he's early early fifties, I think. At, at best, late forties. Body goes at forty five. That's it. It, it. it goes. It goes. Let's see here. You, you hit your peak, honestly, about thirty. Stay there until you're like forty. It goes down a little bit, and then forty five. Just that's the end of it. You already enjoyed your prime, folks. And the downward slide. Wait a second. I'm 45. I'm on my downward slide already? That's never a good thing. But back to this match, though. Um, Edge versus Jey Uso. Uh, some quick covers by Edge. Um, <laughs> Edge's, Edge's appendix hits the steps. He's like, sells his ribs. and like, well, that's not his ribs. That's his appendix. Because he hit like right above the right hip bone. And then he goes, oh. Yeah. Trust me, rup, rup, rup. I, I was worried that he ruptured his appendix for a second. That's not cool. Um, what else? Jay launches himself at Edge, goes onto the table. Jay Uso is going crazy with these dives, and that's pretty cool to see. I think that's Jimmy Uso. I think Jimmy Uso had, I think, a knee injury. Naomi's still wrestling, so. We'll see what happens. I have to do that too tomorrow. So much stuff to do tomorrow. Crazy man. <sighs> Edge gets the arm stretch again. Clanks at it against the post. Kind of catch each other in each other's moves. So that was that was pretty cool. Edge eats a super kick and a splash, but somehow he kicks out by Edge. And then it takes just one spear to finish off Jey Uso. End of match. A good enough match. Cheeseburger match. Then Roman Reigns takes out Edge to end the segment. Then Daniel Bryan jumps from the barricade. There we go. I'm back, baby. Yep, and now, after that little break, time's about some raw. But again, before I do that, some more thank yous to give out. Colt Cabunny. Yes, sir. You know, ever since you joined the Dark Order, you always seem to win by dirty pen. And Teflon Billy, it's been a while since I've heard from you, but I think, thank you very much, I think you told me when Wrestlemania was, you sir, are a member of the El Generico band. So let's get to Raw, I think, um, well we can probably get to Raw, what's going to happen next week, I think I'm going to do a live stream for Raw. Only because I have to do my grocery shopping. I have to get to the gym. It's hard to do my grocery shopping. Go to the gym, then do the video. It's easier if I just do the live stream. And then go to the gym. And then I save myself. Even though I get less sleep. Eh, no, I get more sleep. So yeah, next week, send me... Semi normalish. We'll see what happens. Oh, also news. More news. Impact Wrestling is moving to Thursday. So that's good. And the fact that hopefully I won't be working as much in future days, and I'll be able to cover it, which is good. So now it's not going to be competing with NXT. And depending on my work schedule, I might even put up 
an NXT show. Who knows? Maybe I'll do an NXT live show. That'll be interesting. Well, Raw, let's talk about this, because Raw starts off. Then I came back from the gym, I'm like, eh, I can be late. I'll chill out for a little bit. No, you can't, because they actually start off with the match. I think I show up five minutes late. Ding, 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 ring the bell, folks. Bobby Lashley takes on Sheamus. Oh, this was actually a really good match. Um, Bobby Lashley is a so strong power slam. I thought it was weird. Yeah. They had this match last week, and last week it was a good match, too. I mean, I can't complain about that, and I think my Ted is attacking her attack net. So if you're a scratches, it's not me scratching myself. It's my cat attacking her attack net, which is good. Which is what she should be doing. She has to get her frustrations out because she saw two other cats move on to my front yard, which is her property and her domain. And her tail got all puffy. And then she felt the need to chase them off. And so I let her out as I stood behind her and she chased away the intruders. Kudos to my cat for protecting the house. But yeah, on this match, Bobby Lashley and Sheamus, um, Bobby Lashley's just so powerful, starts off with a power slam, that's good. Uh, Cedric's just talking junk the entire time. So good at talking trash. Uh, Bobby puts himself... The only thing is that he posts himself again. <sighs> And I think it was probably Colt, Colt Cabani said said why is he why or I said why does he just stop running into like corners? Well, thing because you know the guy's going to get out of the way, so he posts himself again. It's kind of bec becoming part of his repertoire. Vince probably thinks it's funny and entertaining. It says, "Yeah, yeah, arr, post yourself, yes." Yeah, big beefy man. Want you to post yourself? Yeah, post. Yeah, Arr. or you're fired. So yeah, terrible Vince McMahon impersonation, by the way. Yeah, so Bobby Lashley posts himself again, and this starts Sheamus's comeback. Uh, again, he does a flying clothesline from the top to the floor. That's good. Then again, has the flying clothesline when they get back in the ring. That's fun. Uh, Sheamus, very heavy-handed, the big, big knee. Oh, that looked vicious. And this was a good, heavy-hitting wrestling match between a true genetic freak and Bobby Lashley. And Sheamus was no slouch himself. So that's really good to see. Um, eventually, Lashley does hit. He hits the spear and puts... Sheamus in the hurt lock. Sheamus has to tap out. That's great. Then Cedric and Sean Benjamin beat up Sheamus a little bit. Drew shows up. Drew taunts Bobby with the belt. And then Drew called him, You son of a bitch! Whoa! What cursing. I don't care. Other than that, this was a really good match. This was actually to start off raw. I was shocked. This was a surf and turf match. Then uh, MVP and Lashley are like, hey, why did you do goofballs interrupt my match? I told you I want to handle it myself. You think I'm weak? You think I need you? I don't need you. You need me. It's like, yeah, go make this right after what you two goofs did to lose the title. Then there was a whole recap of Orton versus Alexa Bliss. Remember, this is now after... Um, <laughs> After Fastlane, when Alexa Bliss straddles Randy Orton in the reverse cowgirl position, almost. The cowgirl position. Yeah. Hey, Alexa. You know, I'm single. You could, you could straddle me like that. No one will be the wiser. Especially Randy Orton's wife. Wow. Terribleness. Um, then we had Oscar versus Peyton Royce. Very technical start. Again, headlock takedowns. They trade that. Uh, head scissors. Very technical. Um, then Oscar says, you know what? I'm dropping the single stuff. I'm going to start kicking you. Peyton Royce. 
does that as well. Um, the Asuka, the, this all starts when Asuka got tr dropped to hold into the turnbuckle. Asuka has an amazing German suplex, though. She hits the code breaker. Peyton Royce hits a turtle stomp. For some reason, though, with a little bit of the striking part, this seemed to go on a little too long for an Asuka versus Peyton Royce match. If they did this match, and I think they did a match like this last year, Peyton Royce, like, tapped out in, like, two minutes. It's, it's good. Don't get me wrong. It is good to see Peyton Royce get her time on WWE TV. But this is Oscar we're talking about. It's, it's not Natalia or Naomi. This is Oscar. Oscar would have crushed her. It would have been such a squash match in NXT. And I'm pretty sure it was a squash match in NXT. But Oscar does win with the Oscar lock. For what it was, it just seemed to be long. It was a good cheeseburger match though. Then Rhea Ripley comes out, talks to Asuka, and I'll tell you what, I don't know what it is, I think it's all the piercings, people say Rhea Ripley is hot looking, <laughs> and there is a story behind this, but she looks like Ruby Wright's cousin though, like they both have the same nose, her, her tits are bigger, I lose it with the face and the piercings though. I don't get two things about women. When 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 cute women smoke, it's just like, eh. and then when and then and this has been a tragedy due to COVID nineteen, but because everyone's wearing masks, you're like, hey, that's a pretty cute chick, until she takes her mask off, and you see her with like piercings all over the place, and you're like, oh, she's not that hot. Put your mask back on. But what happened is that. Rhea Ripley pointed up to the WrestleMania sign, and that's the way you have a WrestleMania match. You just have to point it to the sign. Uh, then Drew McIntyre talked a little bit more, and then we had Miz TV, and this led to the Miz versus Jeff Hardy, of all things. I think we were talking. I think in Discord we we're talking about. Oh no, this is this is gonna be the infamous X match. Oh, um, Sting, Sting versus Jeff Hardy. Eric Bischoff comes up, put up the X, Scorpion Death Drop, pin him, go home. So yeah, again, I wish the best for Jeff Hardy. He 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 has his own demons, as you can tell by his various tattoos on his back. But yeah, I just hope it's not. Oh, and I forget, I forget the name of the pay per view. But. Again, the Sting Jeff Hardy infamous X match. Took three seconds. Eric Bischoff came out and said, No, we're. we're uh, nah. <laughs> nah, not happening. Um, this was actually a pretty de decent match. Uh, Miz sends Jeff Hardy and. Uh, Miz goes into all four turnbuckles. He gets. Wait. Obsolete. 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 Obsoleted by Jeff Hardy. Then his jawbreaker, Miz, needed the heel comeback. Jeff needed his combo. Super combo. Ultra combo. Uh, with a slight comeback, and then his combo moves. Um, Jeff. Again, he only did a second rope splash. I think Father Time is trying to make his comeback against Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy would have gone to the top rope. I mean, Jeff Hardy wants to go up to a 12-foot ladder if he could do a splash. For him only to go to the second rope? Indeed. So that, that was unique. Um, as eventually post Jeff Hardy, uh, then hits the skull, skull crushing finale. The Miz went over. The Miz is, is, is really pissed off heel now. It was a ham sandwich of a match. And then the funny thing is, Bad Bunny comes out, he finds the proper prop guitar and smashes it against Miz's back. And that's that. Then we had AJ Styles versus Kofi Kingston. This was a really, this was a good match too. 
I don't think AJ Styles is capable of having a bad match. AJ Styles couldn't have a bad match if he tried. Uh, Kofi Kingston. I mean, Selfie was stronger than he was bigger. Uh, Xavier Woods does nothing but talk the whole time. Uh, AJ kick out at, at one after a shoulder tackle. That was good to see. Um, AJ Styles, again, he saved his own life on the top rope. That was pretty cool. Kofi had the monkey flip. Um, AJ Styles uh, also ate a springboard backdrop. Yeah, drop. No, springboard drop kick by Kofi Kingston. Um, from there, AJ Styles had that. Oh, that that neck that neck breaker, so good. Uh, Kofi. Then he sends Kofi into the steps on the outside. Kofi Kingston, of course, is going to make his comeback. The splash on the back of AJ Styles that looked nasty. AJ Styles was on in all fours, and Kofi Kingston just did a big splash on top of that. There's no SOF, no SOS though. Instead, AJ re uh, reversed that into the calf crusher. Uh, AJ Styles, such a pre precise basement drop kick, such a technician. AJ Styles goes outside, and all of a sudden, oh! Xavier Woods distracts him with the trombone. This allows Kofi Kingston to the SOS, and. I don't know. It was it was a weird because it seemed that AJ did get his shoulder up for that three count. So we'll see what happens. Because again, and I don't even know if they addressed it because I didn't catch. Well, that, this will be on Monday, but I swear AJ Styles and the rest of Discord said well, he he got his shoulder up. Referee, because of that, it was still a solid match. It's a cheeseburger match. Uh, Seamus does an interview. Riddle's on the scooter. Hey, bro. Are, are leprechauns real, bro? Is there really a luck this monster? I know Seamus just beat Riddle with a scooter. Riddle deserves that. Put the U.S. title on Seamus. That's the Brooklyn spell. He kind of, he quasi deserves it. Then we have Drew McIntyre versus Shelton Benjamin and, and Cedric Alexander. This is actually pretty good. I would have given it a higher rating if it wasn't kind of the gimmick match of the night. Uh, Shelton oh, starts the match pretty stiff. Drew hits like a near brain buster on him. Oh, that looks so... Brain buster is such a pretty move when done right. Oh, it's, it's instant finisher, just like the pile driver. Bring back the pile driver. You can do the brain buster. Brain busters. And finish her. That's it. You get dropped and have your neck compressed. Finish him. Fatality. For those of you going to go see Mortal Kombat the movie. I'm going to skip that movie because I remember the original. Yes. That's right. And then. <laughs> I should play the music but nah. Um. But yeah, uh, Cedric eventually got pulled. He got pulled in by Drew McIntyre. Drew's like, I'm going to beat up both of you. Although Shelton gets his licks in, he starts doing classic mat wrestling. So good as Shelton Benjamin. Drew hit, hit that stomp. That was great. Cedric saved Benjamin. Um, then Shelton sends himself headfirst into the post. Ouch. This was like legit head first. Ouch. I don't know how they do that. Cedric eventually. The chop lock. Again, if you're going to go after the bigger man, you definitely want to take their knees out. Smart professional wrestling. Shelton then, Shelton then um, beats on Drew. Cedric hits the dive. Uh, both send Drew in, into the... I am the barricade, I am the barricade, I am the barricade, cuckoo, cuckoo. Uh, Cedric works over Drew a little bit, Drew has a comeback against Shelton, Cedric eats the claymore though, Drew gets the pinfall, one, two, three, Drew McIntyre wins, you know what, this is a cheeseburger match.
but MVP uh, gives Cedric and Shelton the talking down to Bobby Lashley's like chumps. Then we have Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke taking on Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. Uh, Naomi and Lana's there on commentary. They're actually doing pretty good on commentary. I love the fact that Naomi and Lana are coming out in matching outfits. Uh, Shayna just beats on poor little Dana Brooke. Nia gets tagged in. Um, Dana takes out, of course, Nia's knees. Again, as you always want to do against a bigger person. Uh, Shayna just takes out Mandy Rose on the outside. Then Reginald shows up in his antics. That's so weird. Um, Naomi hits the Samoa drop. That's the end of Mandy Rose and Dana Brooks. Samoan drop hit by Nia Jax. Game over. Eh. Ham sandwich of a match. Now we see Naughty Alexa Bliss in the playground. Oh my my. They must have some fun role playing stuff. And then, oh, walk with a lie. Yes. Oh, walk with a lie. Yes. And Elias sings his song. He actually gets to finish his whole song. Um, and then he's going to face Braun. This was just a matter of Elias getting worked over. <laughs> and then, everyone's about this. Woo! The tree effect when Braun does the run around and run around the ring. Yeah, Elias has got some offense. It might as well have been a squat. Near, it was a near squash match. Um, bad idea, Shane, to come out and, and, and try to break that crutch over, over Braun's back. Just annoyed him, and your cane broke, showing everyone that you faked that knee injury. Again, Elias hit the power slam, um, bronze from it, the pot running power slam on Elias. Yeah, the sound effect made it worthwhile. Woo! It was a ham sandwich mash. It made me smile, especially that sound effect. Then Randy Orton summons the fiend. Bad idea to close out Monday Night Raw. And that was Monday Night Raw. Um, for the most part, it was kind of fun show. Let's see here. A couple minutes left. Um, so the way next week's going to work, Saturday this video will probably go up. Um, I'll probably catch the replay of SmackDown tomorrow. So I'll be able to do my video on, on tonight's SmackDown tomorrow. Sunday, there's no wrestling. I get a day of reprieve off. Monday, I'll probably live stream. Tuesday, I have to work, so there's no impact. Uh, Wednesday, I have to go up to Jacksonville, drop off Easter stuff. Thursday, I'll probably put together my day in the life of Hobo Tom. That's my three-year celebration. Friday, I will get to do... A SmackDown recap. Sorry, and Sunday I'm off. Indeed. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And I'll see everyone Monday. Bye.